everybody. Um, my name is Tracy. I am a senior in the Yukon Puppet Arts program um, and I'm here today to talk about how to make paper shadow puppets. So there's a lot of different designs that you can do for shadow puppets but at the end they're probably going to come out something sort of like this where there's a paper figure and then there's some sort of rod on the end and the rod is taped onto the paper. So just a rough over of what materials you'll need. You're gonna need paper to be able to draw on thing, to be able to draw out these shadow puppets. Or if you want something a little sturdier, you can use like a old cardboard. This is like an old graham cracker box. It's just a little bit sturdier paper. You can also use cereal boxes for that or just any sort of paper, something that once you shine a light through it, you're not gonna see it on the other side. Like it's gonna make a shadow. Then you can also have colored pencils or crayons or markers or anything to decorate your puppet with. You're going to need scissors to cut it out, um, some tape to tape a rod on. You can use glue for the rods if you want to. I just like to use tape because it's removable and then you can swap things out. And then for the rods themselves, you can use a chopstick or an old straw or you can eat, or a pencil that you can glue it onto. You can even use the colored pencils or the markers that you're decorating with. There's a lot of different options. So where I think the best place to start when you're making a shadow puppet is you want to think of an idea and then you want to draw that first before you get any of the cutting done. Some people like to cut it out first and then color, but I'm a big fan of draw it out, color everything in, get it all planned, and then get the cutting done. So let's say the puppet we wanted to make is like an octopus. I really like the octopus. They're some of my favorite animals. I think they're very fun to draw. So you'll just have your paper and you can draw on a table, but I'm just kind of drawing on the wall here so you can see. So you get like the big octopus head and then you get some tentacle. Oh, that's a pretty chunky tentacle. I might want to thin that out. I like to always have an eraser because I change my ideas a lot when I'm drawing. So there'll be a few tentacles and I'm just drawing these kind of quick just so that you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. So let's say there's a little squid guy. He's not the best drawn. We're getting through quick. There's a lot of edits you can make. Let's say I'll give him one, two eyes right here. And then just sort of thinking in advance for this puppet, we could say that like, right here in the center is where I can put this rod. So I personally don't super love when you can see the rods while you're making a shadow puppet, but you can do whatever you want. The rod can come from the side, it could come from the top and between the eyes. I just like to do from the bottom. It's what I'm used to, but you have options. So then going from there, you could color it in with colored pencils, you could color it in with markers. I'm gonna skip a coloring step right now, um, but feel free to take time during this workshop or after to color and decorate it however you want. Um, but the reason that I like to use color on the shadow puppets is that when you hold it up against a shadow screen, and we'll talk about how to make a shadow screen later, but when you hold the puppet up against a shadow screen, the color, if it's right up against the screen, you can sort of see what you colored through with the markers or with the colored pencils. So to sort of demonstrate how that'll work later, I'll take just a little bit of orange and I'll do a little bit of color right in the middle of my octopus so that once we get to that step later, you'll be able to see a bit more of what I'm talking about. So then you, after just pretending that this is all colored, all fully finished, after everything's done, you would take your scissors and you cut your shape out. And the reason that I like to color before cutting is that if you go over the line that you colored, that's totally fine. You're cutting off the extra paper later. So it's no worries, it's not really an issue. But if you cut out your puppet first and then you're coloring it after, if you go over the line, whatever you colored is gonna get on your table or... But anyway. So you're cutting through all of your different little ends with your scissors and you want to, if you drew a line with pencil first, you can follow that. Or this is kind of a time where like if you drew something and you're not a super big fan of what you drew, you can kind of cut it off and rework things. There's a lot of different options. 
And this is sort of the stage of the shadow puppet where it's all about creativity and it's all about whatever design you have. So you can do anything you want. You can make people, you can make animals, you can make aliens, any kind of shape. It really doesn't matter. I picked an octopus for my first one, but anything that you can think up and you can draw, you can make into a shadow puppet. The one thing you're gonna wanna make sure of though is that it's like one solid shape. Like if I made a little hat for my octopus, that would be a different piece. So then I would have to get a different rod for it. Like you could make a little hat, but then you would just have to be prepared to think of that as kind of a like separate puppet. So it's a little bit about like thinking in a mindset of these are silhouettes, like they're solid shapes that I'm gonna need to be able to cut and attach things to. So let's say you've got your puppet out, he's ready to go. There's a couple of fun eyes on here and maybe you want it to be so that you can see the eyes through when the puppet's on the screen. So what I like to do is you can take part of your scissors, you can take a pencil, anything that has a little bit of a point and you kind of hold the paper really taut. You might wanna get somebody to help you with this, but you hold that really taut and you kind of just push the scissors through and that's gonna make little holes in the paper. I don't know if you can, little holes in the paper just like that. So then you can stick your scissors in that tiny hole in the paper and just sort of cut around in a bigger circle so that you have the shape of your eyes. Sorry, this is a little trickier holding it up. I usually cut more in my lap, but I think we made it work. So then you'll see there's kind of the holes in the eyes here so that if I took this as is and held up a flashlight to it against a wall, you can see that like the light is going through these eyes and making a couple of little eye holes. And you can make all sorts of shapes. So I could have cut out a mouth and then this could have had a little smile or whatever you want, any kind of shape. Just, it is fun to kind of think in advance about, well, here's the shape that I cut and this is how it's gonna look if it was up against a wall. And then following that, you're gonna wanna find some sort of a rod since holding this with your hand totally works, completely fine, but then you're seeing the shadow of my hand while you're seeing this octopus. And I think adding a rod lets it be a little more independent. There's a little more that you can do with it. So let's say I'll take my chopstick for right now, but again, straw, pencil, anything you have around. And you'll take just a little piece of tape. I like to use masking tape, but if you just have scotch tape, any tape is fine, as long as it's sticky. Put it on the back of the shadow just like this, and then you're gonna tape it kind of to whatever you're using as the rod first, and then sort of pinch that on the sides and flatten it out on the paper. So you'll see that the tape is holding it around all three sides of that and then flat on the sides of the paper so that it really holds down. Like I could shake this around, that's not going anywhere. But the thing I really like about the tape is, let's say you make a whole shadow show. You have like 40 shadow puppets and maybe you only have 10 pencils to use as rods. You can just peel that tape right back off your puppet and then you have a rod that is new and a shadow puppet that you can just store flat in a drawer or a folder, anywhere. It'll save you space, lets you make more puppets, a lot of fun options. So you've got your little shadow puppet. It's had, it has its eyes and it's got its base color on it. Before we get into how to put this up with a shadow screen, since you could also use a wall, I wanna show you guys a fun trick. You're all cool artists. I've seen everyone leaving comments on the Ballard page. Here's a fun trick. If you have a plastic bag or um, plastic wrap, or maybe there's like extra plastic from your bread bag, as long as you have some sort of clear plastic, you can take a Sharpie marker and then you can color on that plastic. And now that that clear plastic has a color on it, if you show that clear plastic 
through a flashlight, then you can, yes, you can see. You can see that the color from the Sharpie comes through the plastic and will shine on your wall. So then I can take this plastic and I can take my scissors and I can cut open, I can cut that plastic. It's a little tricky with these scissors. You might want a buddy for this, but whatever works. And then you have this little clear piece of plastic that has that color on it. And you can take that and tape it to somewhere like the eye or the mouth, anywhere that there's a little hole in your puppet. You can take your tape and here's our tape. Take your little piece of tape, tape it on your little piece of plastic, just like that. So that when you look at the puppet from the front, you can see the color and the clear plastic, but you're not seeing the tape coming through the other side. So then when you take your flashlight and you put that up against the wall, then you'll see there's the color from the plastic behind it so that your what seemed to be just black and white shadow now has a little bit of color. So you've got this puppet, maybe you've got some other puppets, and you can always perform up against a wall for your shadows. That works totally fine, it's great, but maybe you wanna have a little bit of distance between you and the shadow that you're working with. You wanna see the puppets, but you don't really wanna see the performer. So there's a lot of different options for how you can make a shadow screen. One of my favorites, and I think the easiest one to convert at home, is if you take two chairs and a piece of like white or kind of easy to see through fabric, and you tie that between the two chairs. Here I have a setup of it like this. So there's these two chairs and they're sort of split apart. And in between, on the tops of each chair, I just tied a piece of fabric. Um, and then that fabric hangs down and you can stay behind the fabric with your shadow puppet um, and hold that up and use it as a screen. And then on the other side, all people are seeing is the puppet. So let's say I had my phone light and I could set that up here and I can kind of wiggle my hand like this and you see my hand on this side, but then on the other side of the screen, you're only seeing the shadow. So it allows for sort of a more professional setup. You're not really seeing the performer as much. You're just seeing the puppetry. And that works pretty well as an option. If you have chairs, you can use chairs for that. You can also use, if there's two beds, you can tie it between two beds. You can tie one end to a chair and just tape the other end of your fabric to a wall. Basically, anywhere you can find a space that one so anywhere you can find a space that you can fit in between and you can put up some sort of fabric, then that'll work. Now, I don't know about everyone else. I was lucky enough to have this piece of fabric and to be able to make that chair set up, but a lot of my bed sheets and other pieces of fabric don't really work as well for shadows. So if you want kind of a smaller screen option or you're just limited on things you can do, there's also, if you take a just white button-down shirt, um, this was one of my old dress shirts, you can also shine a light behind that and that'll work as a shadow screen. So you can like hang this up. So even on a hanger, you can kind of hang this up anywhere and then use your puppets behind it. And then with the flashlight, that'll show through. Sorry, this is a bit of a tricky angle to kind of fully show everything, but if my flashlight is here like this, then you can kind of just see the bits of that octopus through this shirt. So it's all really about like the angle of the light and where you're placing it. Like you can see if I bring this light really close, then it's just a little circle, but if I bring it back, then there's a bit more light. And right now I just kind of have it resting on the table under this shirt. And if I push that puppet really up flush against the fabric, then you can kind of see just a bit of that octopus, but you can also see a little bit of the orange that we colored before. And if this light was up like here rather than lower on the ground, you'd get 
sort of a clear image of this shadow. So it's all, once you're setting up a shadow screen, it's really all gonna be about where the puppet, where the screen is in relation to the light and where the puppet is in between those. So like, I can kind of show on the wall here, if I have a really far away light, my puppet's gonna look really small and the shadow might not look as clear. But if I have a really close light, then my puppet looks a little clearer and it also looks a lot bigger. So there's a lot of things you can play with, with lighting and with shadows. Oh, oh my gosh, I almost forgot to bring up. This little trick with the plastic that we talked about earlier, where you color it and then put the plastic there, you can also color the plastic and put it over your light. So I have an octopus. Let's maybe say we were doing a full underwater show where there's octopuses, there's fishes, there's turtles, the whole nine yards. So you can take a little blue piece of this colored plastic. And if you're using a phone light, you can put it on that phone light. And then the whole light that you see is gonna be blue. So then if I'm using this blue light there with this shadow, you can sort of see that it's giving a little bit of a blue tint to my shadows. And it kind of shows that there's more of an underwater theme to the whole thing. So I really like to be able to play with like lighting and color and a lot of different things with shadows. And maybe you want some other fun props for your shadows that are kind of outside of the quote unquote traditional paper. You can also, if you just have a flashlight, walk around your house and find all different sorts of objects that you can use to be able to make fun shadows. So I brought with me, there's this cheese grater and this little cup. So you can take this cheese grater and you can kind of hold it up with your shadow and you'll see that if I hold my light really close, it just sort of makes this grid of all these different lights. And then I can hold up my octopus and you'll see in the shadow, it looks like he's behind things or maybe he's at a disco party. Whatever you wanna use this effect for, you can kind of wiggle them around and all the holes will move. Or you can take this cup and because it's glass and it's clear, then the light will shine through it. And you can hold the light up right in the center of this cup. And when it's on the wall, it'll make this sort of like magical effect with all of these different like shadows and light. And there's a lot of things you can do with that. I've seen a lot of shows where people use this to also represent being underwater, or you can use it to say that there's like a magical transformation happening or whatever you want, really. I just think it's a really pretty effect. And I'm just turning the cup with my hand while I'm doing this. So you can use that to make a lot of really exciting shadows. All right, that was a lot that I just covered in the past few minutes. Are there any questions in the comments? I'm not seeing anything at the moment. So I'm hoping that these comments are going through and that's not a tech issue on my end. Um, if there's any comments that I'm not seeing, I will check after this is posted and be able to respond to you. And I think one other thing that I wanna bring up about shadow screens, ways that you can make them, if you don't have any sort of fabric that you can use, if you have tissue paper, that will also make for a good shadow screen. So you can take this tissue paper and it'll hold up pretty taut and you can tape it to something, you can glue it to something, you can like pin it in, whatever you want. But as you can kind of see, if I shine up a light to that, I'm getting that sort of like light is coming through, but it's if I'm behind here, it's blocking me, but you can still see the light and you can still see some puppets. So when you're experimenting with shadow puppets. I think the biggest thing to sort of remember is to keep a flashlight or some sort of light source with you the whole time and then have like a wall or a floor or somewhere you can cast it because you can always be going back and forth between building something for your puppet and then experimenting with the light because my favorite thing about shadow puppets isn't like the making process. It's more experimenting with the light and seeing what you can find out. Since 
these shadow puppets aren't like, they're beautiful, but they're not the most elegant or refined thing. This is just a rod that I found from somewhere. So you can take any sort of objects that you have around and make these really beautiful pieces with like just a cheese grater or with just a cup. So it's less about what you're kind of seeing in the 3D world and more about what you can get up in these shadows. Just a little bit of that. A little bit of shine some shadows. Ooh, is, there we go. Um, does anybody have any last minute questions? No, okay. Well, before I sign off, I'd like to say this upcoming Friday, same place, um, same time at two, but Friday, which I think is the, today's the 8th, 9, 10, the 10th or 11th, but this Friday, my very good friend and other Ballard Institute worker, Felicia Cooper, will be leading a workshop on sort of object performance. So while you're looking around and finding these fun objects that make really good shadows, you can also sort of start collecting objects you want to use for that workshop. So we hope to see you there this upcoming Friday on the Fun Shadow Workshop. Thank you.